Breaker Breaker YouTube. What's going on everybody? Uh, I'm here at the Dallas Drop Yard that Prime shares with many other trucking companies. Uh, I was asked to do this video, I don't know man, two, maybe three months ago. Uh, I really just didn't have a great opportunity and honestly this still isn't quite what I had in mind how I wanted to do the video. This place is packed though. I was actually wanting to eventually disconnect from the trailer and back up next to it uh, to show you guys a couple of things. But uh, not going to work out. Like I said, this place is packed. I, I think this is the, the most packed I've ever seen it. But yeah, I believe it was Ed that asked me to do this, uh, so I apologize for taking so long. Um, there's actually a lot of videos on YouTube that explains how to prime your trailer uh, if it ever runs out of fuel. But uh, I was asked to do it, so here it is. Start off, I'm going to give you two tips that I use uh, out here to try to keep from running out of fuel. I've never run out of fuel. Um, I have come close one time. But uh, these are two tips that I use to try to ensure that I don't run out of fuel. First tip is always fuel before you go to a shipper or receiver. Now I know that seems like a, an obvious uh, observation but you'd be surprised at how many people will pull into a shipper or receiver thinking oh you know I'm I, I don't need to get fuel because I'm gonna get unloaded you know I'm doing a live unload or a live load and, and uh, you know I'll be good to go but uh, the problem with that is is if you're below a half a tank maybe pushing a quarter of a tank um, you could run out of fuel sitting there at the dock. Uh, I've been to some of these shippers and receivers that you're that they take hours to load you or to unload you. They'll go ahead and put you in a dock and you'll open your doors and you'll back into the dock. Well, your trailer's not sealed completely. Uh, and depending on the temperature that you gotta set your trailer at, yeah, your trailer could be running nonstop for hours. Uh, if, if, if that happens, and, uh, you know, again, you're sitting at less than a half a tank or so. <clears throat> it's a possibility you could run out of fuel. Uh, my second tip is never let your tank get below a half a tank. I always try to keep it as full as possible. Now, I'll let it get down to a half a tank. I don't fill up at every stop. Uh, I'll let it get down to a half a tank sometimes. And... Uh, but I try not to let it get below a half tank. That way I don't ever have to worry uh, about running out of fuel because sometimes you might be in a situation where you haven't filled it up thinking, oh, I'll be okay, and you're down to a quarter of tank. You're like, oh, I still got a quarter of tank. And then next thing you know, there's a wreck on the freeway. Uh, you're stuck in traffic for hours, and then you're pushing it. You know, you're, you're pushing it on, on getting fuel in that reefer to keep it going. So, those are my two tips. Now, every situation is a little different, so, you know, you can fluctuate on some of that stuff. Um, <clears throat> you know, as you're out here, the longer you're out here, because most of my videos are directed towards, you know, prime drivers, which a lot of times are new drivers. Um, so, you know, if you've been doing this a while, you already know, you know, I mean, you, uh, you, you don't need those tips. Um, but there's a lot of new drivers out here, and that is a, a good uh, rule of thumb, two tips that you need to go by until, you know, you get a feel for places and things out here. Um, but, the, yeah, I would definitely, I mean, even now, I've been out, I've been doing this for over two and a half years, and, and I still, I follow those tips pretty closely, man. Uh, you know, this, uh, you, you don't want to have a loaded trailer and run out of fuel. So, uh, also, <clears throat> what I'm fixing to show you next is these reefers, 
uh, the carrier brand specifically, uh, I don't know about Thermo King. Now we are going to get some new Thermo King uh, reefer units. Uh, Prime announced that, I don't know, a couple weeks ago or maybe more, uh, probably a month ago. Um, but they announced we're gonna start using Thermo King. We're gonna try them out. So I may have to redo a couple of these videos doing the Thermo King now, because right now, any of these videos I do, they're carrier. Uh, we don't have anything but carrier on our trailers. So, uh, what I'm about to show you is basically the same process um, for when you're wanting to override the reefer door alarm. Uh, I've got a video, I may put that down in the, uh, put the link down in the description. But uh, your reefer has a, a switch that when it gets to a certain point, it will automatically quit running. So that way you don't run completely out of fuel. This saves you from having to prime your fuel back to the, to the, to the unit. Um, you can just you know run, go to a, a, a fuel station uh, get your fuel, fill it back up, and the reefer will automatically read that it's got a full tank now, and it will autom it'll start running again. Uh, it's a safety feature. Uh, I don't know why, but there's been times that I've seen this safety feature turned off. I don't know why you would want to turn it off uh, unless you know for a fact that you are about to be at a you know a fuel station and, a, and are about to fill it up uh, but even then I, I would rather just leave the, the safety switch on that way you don't have to worry about it I mean if you're that close to a fuel station just leave it on um, I mean that's the only I mean if you because if you override it and it runs completely out of fuel well then you're gonna have to do this extra work and prime the reefer unit so I, I, I recommend not overriding the safety switch. Alright, so let's get out there and get to it. Alright, so the first thing I want to show you is the override button. Hit menu twice and you can see there's functions here. Now, if it's not here, what you do, you hit these two outside buttons right here at the same time. Hit both of those at the same time, it equals, and then you can see it says driver mode enabled. Let me see what that does. All right, functions is gone. So if it's not there, that's what you do. Get both of these outside buttons at the same time, it equals, and you can see it says advanced user mode enabled. Now you can hit menu twice you'll see it says functions. Hit this button under functions. Scroll down to overrides. Hit equals. And you can barely see there. There's a the stop door alarm and there's a the stop fuel shutdown. See, they both say no. I'm gonna go ahead and override the door alarm. Hit equal. It'll say yes. Reset. Or yes, no reset. You want yes, no reset. Now you can do the same thing with the fuel shutdown. Scroll down the fuel shutdown. Now it's the same thing. Scroll down to there, hit equal. You can see it's highlighted. Scroll down, yes reset. Yes, no reset. Now I want this on no. The reason why is because I don't want it to run out of fuel. If, if you hit yes, no reset, then what happens is it will run it completely out of fuel. So you don't want it on yes, reset. I recommend you leaving it on no, uh, so you, you know, 
if you're running low on fuel, you might even want to check that because if it runs out, it will run most likely completely out. And then this is the next process you have to do if it runs completely out. So make sure that override switch is on no. You don't want it overridden. So if you do run completely out of fuel, you're gonna step up here on your catwalk, you're gonna open your doors. It's an old trailer, so everything's a little stiff. All right, so right here, just above your starter, this is your pump. Now what you're gonna do, after you fill it up, you gotta fill, you gotta fill your tank up first. Otherwise, you're just wasting time doing this. So you're gonna come right here. You're gonna turn this counterclockwise until it pops up. Now this is your pump. And is what it's gonna do is it's gonna pump fuel through your system. And right up here is your fuel filter. But your fuel, that's gonna pump fuel, the fuel from your tank up to the, up through your system to get fuel back into your, your unit here. Now this is a release valve. You're gonna to wanna to open it up, turn it counterclockwise as well, and make sure it's open. Now you're gonna to wanna to pump this Ain't wanting to spring up very good. But you're going to want to pump this at least once every second. Just keep pumping up and down. Eventually it will get stiff. This one feels pretty stiff. But eventually it will get stiff. And that's when you kind of know that you're getting fuel up to your system. Once you feel like you've gotten fuel pumped through your system, turn the reefer on always make sure your reefer's off when you're doing this you don't want to get your hands caught in anything so uh but once you feel like you've it's gotten stiff enough and you feel like you've got fuel pumped into the system go ahead lock this back down shut your release valve off and then start your system up Sometimes it might not start the first try, so you might let it try it a couple of times, and if it does not start, shut it back off and repeat. Counterclockwise, unscrew until your pump comes up. Counterclockwise, open your release valve and pump. Keep on pumping. Now this can take a long time. That's why you don't want your unit to run out of fuel, which is why I recommend not turning your override switch on. You can't you can uh, come right here and you can actually uh, take the fuel line off to check and see if you've gotten, you're getting fuel up to here yet. Um, but, you know, unless you really know what you're doing, I wouldn't mess with any of this stuff because it's the same way with your fuel filter. You could take this off and actually put some fuel in your fuel filter, screw it back on uh, and that way it will, it will, once you've done all your pumping, you know, go ahead and do that and then pump, 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 pump. And then when you start, at least it'll have fuel to try to start it and hopefully suck fuel up through the system, <clears throat> uh, which can help out. But again, <clears throat> unless you want to get fuel on you and, or you know what you're doing, I don't recommend messing with all that. I just, I, I say do steps one and pump this up step two try to start it if it doesn't start repeat so that's all there is to that now what I'm actually going to show you next is uh, something I bought you can get them at the truck stop, Loves, TA, any of them. But uh, I bought this for situations where I'm about to run out of fuel in my reefer. And I'm gonna show you, it's a, it's a pump, 
and I'm going to show you guys how to use this. So it's just a hand pump. Same thing, kind of like what, whoop. Kind of like what's in the motor. You got your pump right here, and you just pull that plunger up and down. You got two hoses, one sucks and one blows. You can see it's got other fittings. You can use it to, uh, you know, it's got a picture there that shows you. Uh, they're actually pumping it out of a gas can. And uh, you can use it to uh, air up balls and mattresses and different things. It's got different fittings and stuff. But I just bought it for this purpose right here. And what you would actually do is you would disconnect from your trailer. Make sure your landing gear is down. Disconnect from your trailer and back up where your, where your fuel tank is even with this fuel tank. Now you take your blowing end and you put it inside there and you take the sucking end and I believe that's the bottom part and you put it inside the tank on your truck. Now as you can see it's tight here. I wasn't able to actually show you this like I wanted to. I wanted to actually back my truck up here and, and, and show you guys. So but it just makes it a lot easier because then you can pump fuel straight out of your truck tank into this tank. That's gonna save you a lot of headache. Uh, I have actually had to add fuel to my fuel tank using gallon jugs. Now that's the other way you can do it is if you, I usually keep a gallon jug in my toolbox, uh, empty old oil gallon jug, you know, make sure it's cleaned out and you can actually fill it up with fuel. You can pump it out of your fuel tank. That's what I did one time. I pumped it out of my fuel tank into a gallon jug. And then I come back in here, back here, and I poured it into the tank. Now, let me tell you, it's difficult. I should have pumped it into the tank using this pump, just like that picture showed, shows, you know, pumping it out of that gas can. Uh, I have seen people that carry gas cans with them They'll strap them to their catwalk right there. I've even seen somebody had some strapped up there. Uh, I don't care if a fuel tank or a, a gas can, a fuel can, uh, that's just more crap you would have to carry. I, I don't see no reason in doing all that. If you just follow the two tips I gave you before, making sure that you are constantly, you know, that you constantly make sure that you have fuel in your fuel tank you won't ever have to worry about it um, I'm not sure if that's why they carry if I'm not sure if that's why they carry fuel cans with them I'm just assuming that that's part of the reason why is for the purpose of in case they run out of fuel whether it's in their reefer or it's in their truck um, you know just feel smart make sure that you check your tanks uh, both on the reefer and your truck. You make sure you know your truck. Make sure you know, you know, I, I, I kind of know around how many miles I can get per quarter of a tank. I usually average it around 200. Sometimes it's more, but if you're in the mountains, running in the mountains, it can be less. So, yeah, just know your truck. Know how it runs and uh, know what you're setting on in your reefer tank. Uh, and if you follow the first two tips and making sure it's always got fuel in it, you won't have to worry about doing any of this stuff. And I forgot to mention uh, why it's difficult uh, using gas cans or uh, or like a gallon jug to put fuel in the reefer tank. The you know the fill lid to your reefer tank sits so close to the bottom of your trailer that it's hard to turn the can, your your fuel can or the gallon jug into a position where you can actually get the fuel to flow nicely into the tank or even to get all the fuel in there. Um, 
when I use that gallon jug to try to do that, it actually dumps some out on the ground. And so that's a waste. Um, that's why I said it, I probably would have been better off to actually do like the picture shows on the on the packaging for that for that pump uh it actually shows that person pumping it out of the fuel can uh that's what i should have done with the gallon jug was actually pumped it out of the gallon jug it probably yeah would it, is it more work well yeah it is uh or if you had a good if you have a, a long funnel uh you might be able to do that and it worked better i don't I, i've got a funnel but it, it wasn't long enough to to do me any justice trying to get fuel in into that tank so yeah i should have i should have probably pumped it in there but uh yeah your best bet is to, to unhook if you're in the situation where you can unhook from your trailer back up beside your trailer and just transfer it straight from your truck over to your your reefer but uh i hope this video helps somebody um you know especially the tips i give you i hope I hope if you follow those tips, you know, you never have to worry about doing any of this extra work. Uh, and instead of getting out in the heat and having to, to pump fuel, you can just order the cold. Hopefully you can just uh, stay in your nice air conditioned or heated truck and uh, you don't have to worry about running out of fuel. That way the only time you have to get out is when you actually put fuel in it at the uh, fuel island. But yeah, I hope it helps somebody or know help hopefully give somebody advice but uh, if you have any questions feel free to shoot them down in the comments below and I appreciate y'all watching stay safe stay alert catch you in the next vid